Tonight, in this edition of the Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television, we talk about the verbal war between the President of the Republic of Cameroon and the United States of America. Critics have concluded that it is the beginning of a mapped out plan to kick President Paul Bia out of the Unity Palace. We'll tell you more on that in this edition of the news. Lawyers defending detainees of the Anglophone crisis have called on the military tribunal in the nation's capital Yaoundé to take into consideration the social status of the accused. Mancho, BBC and other detainees of the Anglophone crisis were in court. In the early hours of this morning, the case has been adjourned. That was barely a few minutes ago to the 25th of May 2018. Those are headlines. We shall be right back with the details. Stay with us. Good evening to you ladies and gentlemen. We thank you for joining us in this edition of the Primetime Newscast on Equinox Television. We begin right here with the outing yesterday of the Foreign Affairs Minister in Cameroon. Observers and critics of the regime of President Pobia have concluded that Donald Trump's United States of America wants President Pobia out of the Unity Palace after the last release of the U.S. ambassador to the country. It has provoked a stiff reaction from the government of Cameroon via the Minister of foreign relations as I indicated or foreign affairs rather as I said just few seconds ago let's have the details of that report with Babla Jonathan the United States ambassador to Cameroon Peter Henry Balurin issued a release May 18 2018 that sent shock waves through the spinal cord of the Yaoundé administration from top to bottom it has provoked a counter-release from the Minister of External Relations, Lejeune Belambela, after he accused the Cameroonian army of targeted killings in the northwest and southwest regions and urged President Paul Beer to leave a historic legacy like South Africa's Nelson Mandela and United States' George Washington, Ambassador Ballerin, was summoned by the Minister of External Relations. This came after the press interpreted the words of the U.S. ambassador as asking President Paul Beer not to stand as candidate in the upcoming presidential election, but to quit power like the former South African and United States presidents cited above did. The release of Minister Mbelambela speaks government's disapproval of the ambassador's statement, which is said to have violated all diplomatic, civil and legal rules. Contrary to the allegations of misconduct contained in the release of the U.S. Ambassador to Cameroon, government says, despite deadly attacks on the army, the security and defense forces have been exercising their duties within the ambits of professional norms and international human rights laws in a bid to preserve lives, freedoms of citizens and their goods, and the peace, stability and territorial integrity of Cameroon. The External Relations Minister told Ambassador Balurin that President Paul Beer is the custodian of Cameroon's stability and constitution. Ambassador Balurin was also urged to respect Cameroonians' choice of their leaders, especially the head of state. The release of Minister Mbelambela reminds the ambassador on all that President Paul Beer does not maintain himself at the helm of the state by force, but by elections. U.S. Ambassador Peter Henry Balurin left Cameroon for his country shortly after his meeting with the Minister of External Relations in Yaoundé. And the exchange of views between the U.S. ambassador to Cameroon and the Bia regime started a few days ago and an end to it is still far-fetched. The outing yesterday of the Minister of Foreign Affairs has exposed the government at all fronts, especially with regards to the management of the current socio-political crisis rocking the two Anglophone regions of Cameroon. Details in the following report. Uh, we, and, uh, new, uh, new, new, uh, nous allons, uh essayer de, de faire notre mieux pour, mm -hmm. pour accompagner uh, le, le processus el électoral, mais mm -hmm. c'est comme, uh, comme je vous ai dit uh, après. It is not the first time that the Foreign Relations Ministry in Cameroon is lashing out at a U.S. diplomat who dared to bring to light some of the loopholes of the regime that has been in place for 35 years now. The previous falling out dates as far back as 1992 when the U.S. ambassador at the time accused the Pobia government of election rigging. 
The utterances of Peter Balerin simply abhors a pledge he met in October 2017 in front of the Foreign Affairs Commission of the U.S. Senate to work with the government, the people of Cameroon and the international community to ensure each free election. The presence of Peter Balerin at the Unity Palace on the 17th of May was not a private visit. As a representation of Washington, D.C. to Cameroon, the ambassador was bearer of a message from the White House to the Unity Palace. Critics hold that the outing of the U.S. ambassador on President Paul Bia's political future was an advice and not an injunction, and for the regime to have reacted in this manner shows signs that living power is not immediate for the head of state. The U.S. ambassador to Cameroon is aware of the diplomatic norms in force. He is also cognizant of the rights of humanitarian interference in public international law, which gives the right to foreign countries and organizations to intervene in times of need. The outing of the Foreign Affairs Ministry in Cameroon simply exposed government's poor management of the current socio-political crisis in the northwest and the southwest regions, which has resulted to preoccupying refugee crisis, homelessness, targeted killings at the level of the international community. And with the escalation of the current unrest, there are signs that objective outings on the situation on the ground would be frequent in the coming days. An immediate end to this war of words between Cameroon and the United States of America is not yet certain. And circulation has returned to normal on the Babaju Bamenda stretch of road. You are in the northwest region of Cameroon that was impracticable throughout last night and the early hours of this morning as a result of the extreme bad state of the road. The Babaju Bamenda stretch of road is one of the projects sponsored by the African Development Bank and works were expected to be due by May 2019. Simanji Kange represents the picture in the following report. We are some eight kilometers to Mathazim in the northwest region on the Babaju Bamenda stretch of road. It was a nightmare for travelers heading to Bamenda from the different regions of the country because of the poor state of road. Many road users were forced to spend several hours on a spot due to the slippery nature of the road which is under construction. More than 300 cars were forced to temporarily stop while the mud was cleared from the road. This section of the road is part of the Babaju Bamenda Highway whose construction works were inaugurated last May 16, 2017 by the Public Works Minister Emmanuel Nganun Jumesi in Santa Subdivision. A year after, no changes on the road which is getting worse. With the advent of the rainy season and the anglophone crisis that has caused the closure of the Kumba Road for users, many travelers will have to go through this ordeal to arrive Bamenda. This has been one of the major cries of the anglophones. The project to reconstruct the Babaju Bamenda Highway is jointly sponsored by Cameroon's government and the African Development Bank. The African Development Bank in August 2017 disbursed 188 billion francs CFA for the rehabilitation of the road, with 120 billion francs CFA expected to be used for the bad section of road of the Yaoundé Babaju. But till date, the project that is expected to be handed to Cameroon by May 2019 is yet to advance. <laughs> Manji Kang Gabriel there reporting and it should be noted that the problem of roads was one of the issues raised by the Anglophone activists when the crisis escalated in November 2016. Mancho, BBC and Co. were in court this morning. The case just ended in the nation's capital Yaoundé. That was barely a few minutes ago. The case has been postponed. So tomorrow, the 25th of May 2018, the defense lawyer Barista Emmanuel Sim told the judge of the military tribunal to use her conscience 
and to be reasonable with the detainees of the Anglophone crisis. He said that Manchu, BBC and other detainees are not guilty of terrorism. They were simply fighting for a better future and urged the court not to put their future into jeopardy. Barista Luisa, that is one of the defense lawyers of Manchu, BBC and other detainees of the Anglophone crisis, told the court to take into consideration their various social status. It was different terms by the various lawyers defending the detainees of the Anglophone crisis today in court. Tomorrow, the verdict is expected to be handed down by the military tribunal. It should be noted that the atmosphere was uh, a tense one at the military tribunal in Yaoundé. In the early hours of this morning, the case, as I indicated, has been adjourned to tomorrow. It took place in a very dark courtroom as a result of the absence of electricity. We shall be telling you more on that in our subsequent newscast. Now we talk about filth in the economic capital Douala that continues. Traders at Mache Double Bar in Bepanda here in the city are agitating over the failure by the government delegate to the Douala City Council and the company in charge of management of waste for not collecting mountains of garbage that continue to rise within the market. They say that it is a huge it is having a huge impact on their day-to-day -day activities as innocent as it tells us in this report. <laughs> This is Double Ball Market in Bepanda, Douala 5 municipality, colonized by heaps of garbage. It's two weeks now since they threw the dead there. So many people around here, they are just bringing all dead they are putting in there. To, yesterday was not like this, but today is really unimaginable. It's too much. Traders are now using nose marks to consolidate their business positions around the decayed heaps of rubbish that have created artificial mountains in the core of the market. These mountains of debt have slowed down business as traders cannot be located by their steady customers. Our business is not going well because of the debt because it is blocking too much customer from trespassing to come this way to buy. So I can say that this country, I don't even know where they are leading on. Uh, Meat and juicy fruits like mangoes are visited and contaminated by house flies. It's even giving sick to so many people around here and even us that we are selling here. Circulation of vehicles, motorbikes and persons in and out of the market is not flexible. Blame suits of this phenomenon has been worn on some Douala 5 council personnel and residents who now use the market as their garbage dump sites. Ce sont eux, les gens de la mairie, ce sont eux. Je poussais même l'autre là-bas jusqu'à ce qu'il est tombé. On the part of the traders, some of them say they have never had plans of dumping dirt in this commercial area, but the worsening situation instigated them. On va faire comment? Business persons at the double ball market, in astonishment, draw the attention of the Douala City Council and the garbage collection company, Isakam. And that brings us to the end of this first segment of the news. Up next is Talking Point. Tonight we are going to be looking at the legal and political aspect of uh, the outing yesterday of the Foreign Affairs Minister, Lujun Belambela. In Cameroon we have as guest a senior barrister at law, Barrister Fru Johnso. Good evening to you, Barrister. Thank you so much once again for your time. Thank you very much for inviting me. We thank you so much for coming. Thank you. We would begin first of all by finding out from you as a legal mind. The uh, Ministry of, uh, of Foreign Affairs has indicated that uh, the outing of uh, uh, Peter Ballerin violates diplomatic norms that he did not respect the secret that surrounds diplomatic discussions. What does that mean, Barista? Uh, in normal circumstances, uh, sovereignty of every nation is supposed to be respected. But today, the international humanitarian law read together with the charters of the United Nations and the various enactments makes it, makes it difficult to respect 
sovereignty of any nation that uses its military might to shoot and maim its citizens. The United States ambassador acting on behalf of his government because they have all the facts on the ground. I don't care what anybody thinks, the CIA and every other person has been, has been filming through satellite everything that every, anybody is doing on the ground here. And he, the ambassador has all those facts. All he, need, all he did was, hey, you are violating human rights, you are burning down villages, killing people, targeted killing, and so on, using your army. And uh, you cannot imagine that this country uses the taxpayers' money to buy guns and equipment, and they use the same guns and equipment, and the soldiers that have been paid by tax money to kill the, the civilians of this country. Therefore, when humanitarian law is being applied, sovereignty is put at the back burner. So you cannot, you cannot defend that by using sovereignty. The communique of the Minister of Foreign Affairs was rather tactless, very tactless because it inflames the whole situation. For one thing, an ambassador cannot go and see your boss, who is the President of the Republic, for an audience and they talk and then you sit behind and summon the ambassador to the ministry. It was not a personal decision. It was not a personal He's decision. He's acting under, uh, under, 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 under his, his government. Under his government. And I want to let you know, uh, let us know, let the public know that the U.S. ambassador was acting on behalf of the United States government and also after consultation with other ambassadors in Yaoundé, of course excluding the African ambassadors, the, the Western ambassadors, especially France. And he went there and he delivered a message. Whatever you want to do with that message is no longer his problem. It was tactless for a minister to sit behind and summon a sitting ambassador after he has met the President of the Republic. If that act took place when, he, when the ambassador had not, been, had not seen the President of the Republic, of, of the Republic I, would, I can tell you that the minister had his right to summon him. So to you, the outing was a mistake? It was a mistake was and was tactless. Efficient, it was, was there tactless. another efficient way of handling the situation? The only efficient way was the President of the Republic, if he was not happy, should have issued a communicate to Cameroonians from the presidency. It was tactless. Secondly, the, the, the United States Ambassador was acting on international humanitarian law to raise a red flag that, hey, Rwanda cannot be allowed to repeat itself in Cameroon. What is so wrong with that? And uh, these pseudo professors and pseudo journalists that have come up with all the editorials and condemning the ambassador, the ambassador, uh, 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 casting aspersions, aspersions on on the United States government and so on and so on. What do they think they are doing? In 1997, Mimi, the then ambassador to Zaire, Mr. B. Richardson walked up and asked for audience with Mobutu, President Mobutu, and went in and told him, your time was up. That was against the sovereignty of any nation. But he was saying what his government had asked him to say. And you knew what happened one month after. Mobutu was begging for a safe passage to go. I don't think that these people here they like poor bear that much. Because poor bear has come to the end of the road and nobody is helping him. Is this now a rift between Yaoundé and Washington, D.C.? A diplomatic rift? From what? From, from the, communica from the communique of the Minister of Foreign Affairs. There's a rift now between the two, the two countries. And if this government is wise, they should rush to Washington to repair whatever is repairable. Because I don't see how they will repair it. And you know, the United States is the first power on this earth, whether we like it or not. And when they have seen what is happening and they raise a red flag, 
and you turn around and insult them. And going to the extent of saying that they have recalled the ambassador when the ambassador was going him on leave, uh, annual leave. And of course, there's this practice that when you go on, when they go on annual leave, they go through the state, the state department and uh, have briefing. Then he goes him on leave. He has not been recalled, for all I know. Cameroonians, including these pseudo professors from I don't know where they come from, uh, they, 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 they want to be heard. I am professor this, I am professor this, and start talking rubbish. They don't even know diplomacy. If they knew diplomacy, they should know that what the ambassador has said, he did not say it by his own volition. Now, the communique equally said that no candidate can be imposed on Cameroon. Is the regime by any chance confirming the candidacy of the President of the Republic? Well, that is exactly what is happening. That is exactly what is happening. I we don't want to. I, I must tell you that something transpired in that presidency between the ambassador and the president. And the, the ambassador came out and gave a press conference on, on a diplomatic level. He used all diplomatic language available. You go, you have a heritage to live, you go by, by you go out by. Uh, like Mandela and Washington and, and George Washington. But the government says that Cameroonians are always rallying behind the President of the Republic and voting for him. I heard that, I heard that, and you must want to know that for the 35 years that Bia has been in power, I don't know any year whereas, that... Whereas the outing I don't know how many years... Have many have nothing to do with election rigging. It has nothing to do with election rigging. But now that he has brought it up, you open the door, everybody will enter. All those people who were interviewed were all CPDM people. And they said all kinds of rubbish about about winning election. Can anybody in this country look at look at me in the eye and tell me whether Bia has won any election organized in this country? But normally? officially, officially, he has always won. Well, officially, election. well, well, when you rig elections start. and you win, officially you have won. In '92, when Francis Cook, when during the one election here, you saw what they did to Francis Cook because France was not not with the United States. This time around. France cannot be seen when there's gross violation of international humanitarian law, crimes against humanity, burning down villages, killing people, targeted killing. Just yesterday, they killed uh, four, 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 four young boys in Bafut. Just yesterday and the day before, they burned down Ngi and Gingwo, including the palace of the of of of, of Chiva Nyangwe, and also Kasna Nyangwe's family. Everything raised down, including the market, including even the biggest businessman in that area. What means that they have not taken any advice from the ambassador. Now, what is the role of the Anglophone crisis in the ongoing diplomatic rift, like you said, between the government of Cameroon and the United States? The fight between, if there's a fight at all, between the United States and Cameroon has nothing to do with this fight, except that it it is talking about the killings, the targeted killings and the, and the humanitarian law violations carried out by the government. Uh, that, is the, that is the only connection I see. But from what I know, it will not affect the fight on the ground until, until Mr. Bia is willing to sit down with the leaders of the, of, of the interim government of Ambazonia, let's call it the name, and talk. There's nothing that cannot is not repairable, Mimi. But if you behave like a king and say it is either this or that, well, you take the consequences. I want to say here that if I understand diplomacy and if I take what happened in 97 in Zaire, Mr. Pierre should be very careful, tell his people to be careful the way they talk on the media and where they talk in the world because the United States is listening. How far can the U.S. go? How far can they go? Who? Do you think it can end only at the level of the, 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 the press releases that we've seen so far? Mimi, and the declarations? Mimi, Cameroon cannot go any further. But I cannot also say, they say that the United States will not go any further. They have taken a position. They sent the ambassador. He announced it. And any, it, where the chips fall, that's where they'll fall. Let's wait and see in the next, in the next uh, weeks, months, you see what happens. I, I, there's a rumor that Mr. Bia wants to meet with uh, Seseko Ayuktabe. That's, in, in that's unconfirmed. It's, it's unconfirmed. unconfirmed. I said there's a rumor. I call it a rumor. Of course. I call it a rumor because it's unconfirmed. But if 
that doesn't take place. And this war continues. Huh. You don't know what the United States can do. I am watching. There's another unconfirmed news about the United Nations Security Council. I cannot even talk about it because it's, it is not, I don't know the source. Now, Barista, tomorrow Mancho BBC and other detainees of the Anglophone crisis will be appearing in court. Again, The case like has been today. going on for several months now, more than one year. What do you have to say about that? I am, waiting. Are expecting a I am tomorrow. waiting for Mr. Mr. Beer to sentence Mancho BBC. And let's see where we'll go from there. Because it is not going to be easy in Bamenda. The lawyers have pleaded. Yeah, that's why. That's that why. That's why they, they are dilly dallying away uh, with the sentencing of Macho BBC. That's why they are dilly dallying because at this time that we are supposed to be coming out of the crisis, you keep sentencing, especially a man like Macho BBC who has done nothing except revendicate bad roads in Bamenda town. So you think it should be released? Is that what ah, you think? Yeah, yeah, like what his defense lawyers are yeah, calling should, for their should, release? Yeah, it should, it should, it should be should discharged be, and acquitted. It was a normal court. But it's not a normal court. So I cannot even count on that. If it was a normal court, it should be discharged and acquitted. But it's not a normal court. He had, he had, they had already found him guilty on certain charges. And acquitted him of... Uh, 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 acquitted charges. him on some. And they will, be, they will certainly go... They are certainly going to sentence him. And let's see... What happens in Bamenda and other uh, anglophone hotspots? Barista, thank you. Thank you very much to our uh, televiewers. It was equally a pleasure having with us in this edition of the Primetime Newscast Tony Knox Television. Wishing you a blessed stay in the company of our programs. Until we meet again, goodbye.